for this fourth talk the studies of the atmosphere using lidar the speaker is dr sohan lal jain and before i hand over the mic to him let me uh, briefly introduce him and his work to you dr sohan lal jain was born on june 7 1946 in isar isar isarmand village in rajasthan he had his education mostly at udaipur university he earned his bsc msc and phd degree in 1960 7 1969 and 1974 before he got his his phd degree uh, from udaipur a university in rajasthan he was offered a position of assistant professor in the university where he taught for one and a half year uh, in the physics department before he got a position in national physical laboratory at new delhi as a scientist in 1975 he joined npl new delhi and did a very wonderful Uh, atmospheric research work there he developed several instruments uh, to measure minor constituents of the atmosphere and it will not be exaggeration uh, to say that he is a, a lidar man as he developed differential absorption lidar uh, micro pulse led lidar heterodyne lidar and these uh, lidars and the other systems for measuring minor constituents he installed at npl new delhi and also at the battery uh, station in antarctic of government of india uh, to this station uh, in the scientific team he had been uh, to that station three times in expedition 13 16 and 21st in 21st expedition he was the station commander as well <coughs> he visited a jet propulsion research jet propulsion laboratory of nasa in usa where he did atmospheric research work in 19 in 2005 he retired as a head of uh, radio and atmospheric science division uh, in npl and after his retirement for 5 years uh, up to 2011 he uh, worked there as a emeritus scientist after his superannuation from npl he had been giving a series of lectures on atmosphere at various institutes including uh, physical research laboratory at amdavad where he taught uh, students of uh, uh, un course Uh, and that's where some of you the participants have interacted him uh, quite closely he <coughs> has been principal investigator for several important projects like ifcar ncaor and apn to name a few he guided four phd students for their research work and he has published 70 very good atmospheric research papers in national and international journals uh, in india there is a turning point program for science education he participated very effectively in seven of one seven of them he authored uh, chapters in eight atmospheric science books with these few words i uh, now hand over the mic to dr sohan lal jain dr sohan lal jain please good morning friends welcome all of you for this fourth seminar on studies of the atmospheric atmosphere using lidar under the programs by space education and research foundation at the outset let me thank professor was for the giving me the opportunity to interact with you people uh, remotely of course but maybe this talk will be again useful to you and uh, 
I will be talking maybe another 45 minutes or so, and then uh, we will have a interaction with the question answer. So I hope you will enjoy the talk. So let us start. So studies of the atmosphere using LIDAR. Uh, the outlines of my talk will be something like this. They say maybe I will give some introduction, then different I talk about different types of leaders, leader scenario in India, uh, current global scenario, scenario of the space borne leaders, leaders for the biological and chemical warfare de detection, and uh, then I will come to my own activities at NPL, that is laser heterodyne system, differential absorption leader, and uh, inversion technique for the laser heterodyne system, and some results. And of course, micropulse radar we have already dis discussed yesterday. So I will not uh, go about uh, detail of that and uh, micropulse radar network around the globe. As you all know, that uh, environment is currently changing, and the IPCC, that is the International Panel on Climate Change, among other, uh, according to them. He stated that balance as evidence suggests that there is a, is a disdainable human in influence on the global climate and some of the important issues are the global warming uh, and uh, uh, air pollution, regional as well as global and then uh, tropospheric ozone loss and uh, stratospheric ozone loss also. Therefore, the measurement of various atmospheric parameters is of great importance to under, understand the physics, chemistry, and dynamics. The availability of the lasers had role in the atmospheric studies. The history of the lasers is like this. The acronym of laser is stand for light amplification by the stimulated emission by of radiation. It was in 1917 that Albert, a great scientist, Albert Einstein, calculated the condi conditions for necessary for the simulated emission to occur. But it was decades later before a practical device of laser was demonstrated. In 1954, Charles Taunas, Taunas in USA, independently, and Bosov and Prokov in Russia suggests a practical method of achieving lasing. This was using ammonia gas and produced amplified microwave radiation instead of visible radiation and it was called measure instead of laser. So for this they were said their uh, Nobel Prize in 1964 for physics. In 1958, Taunas and uh, uh, Skelov calculate the conditions to produce visible laser light so finally, in 1960, 1960, very important, the first true laser was demonstrated by T. Maiman using a ruby. So the 1960 was the first laser was demonstrated. The LIDAR is an acronym of light detection and ranging. It is a direct optical analog of radar using radio or detection and ranging waves and in lidar experiment laser light is emitted into atmosphere in, instead of the radio waves in the radar and the beam was uh, can interact with the atmospheric parameters such as aerosols or um, molecules in the number of different ways and the backscattered radiations or direct radiation can be used for uh, getting the differences in the atmosphere. The laser light can be scattered elastically with no, that means elastic means that with no change in wavelength or color from the molecules in the atmosphere that is the Rayleigh scattering and from the particles that is me scattering. So if they scattered from molecules, this is Rayleigh scattering and if it's uh, scattered from the particulate matter, it is me scattering. Laser light can be scattered inelastically, means where the uh, backscatter radiation will be not the same wavelength which was uh, initially emitted. 
in this instance the wavelength of better light is shifted and the change in wavelength is dependent on the molecule which is which scattered the lights so is a space is characteristic of the molecule itself who is the wavelength and so this give the information of that particular wavelength so this is known as a raman scattering who was uh, who also got the nobel prize for india in physics laser light can be absorbed by a in small molecules absorbed energy can then be radiated by the molecule at the same at the same or another wavelength and this process is known as a fluorescence under certain circumstances this can particularly sensitive to and specific since the absorbed wavelength is molecule specific and so it is a fluorescence wavelength so this is again used for the uh, identify particular uh, to characterizing particular molecule or species in that atmosphere laser light can be absorbed but not radiate optically this is a result of reducing the uh, reducing the rayleigh scattering laser light scattered in any of these ways can then be directed using a telescope and light and sensitive detectors and then electron is used for acquire and store the signal from the detector and then you can calculate make analysis of the data to get the information about the uh, results you uh, in particular matter and distance of the scattering molecule or particle from the transmission site can be reduced if a pulse laser is used and one simply measure the time from the laser pulse to uh, to the uh, time that the lidar signal is received so from the initial transmission uh, time when the beam is transmitted and when received the difference in time will give the information of the double the distance it the beam has traveled some historical review that uh, how the optics started to get uh, various parameters in the atmosphere so in 1930 when there was no laser j in 1930 first proposed that the method of determining atmospheric density using anti craft search light as the source of beam and large telescope as a receiver ranging could be accomplished by operating the biostatic configuration where the source and receiver were separated by several kilometers and light could be detected by using photo electric apparatus two impulse measurement could be used to eliminate the same region of the sky the first reported results obtained using the principle of this method was those of duckloch in the 1936 who made photographic recording of the scattered light from the search beam search light beam the photograph was taken at a distance of 2.4 km from the search light using f1.5 lens and uh, exposure for 1.5 hours so initial start the measurements in 30 using the search lights then the was the first person to use monostatic system monostatic system means uh, receiver and transmitter are uh, located at the same place which we will discuss in later later on in 1938 for determine the cloud base height in this the light source was pulsed thereby enabling the range at which the scattering occurred to be determined from the round trip of the scatter light pulse by refinement of the techniques by instrumentation they were made more and more uh, improvements in the systems and alterman in 1953 calculated density and temperature profile up to 66 7.6 km using biostatic system biostatic system is the receiver and telescopes are separated by few meters or few kilometers so where it in that case particularly they 
put them at 20.5 kilometers apart. Then Fred Land et al. reported the first, first monostatic system for measuring atmos 1956. So these were the earlier uh, experiments to start the measurement of atmospheric parameters when there was no laser. In invention of the laser in 1960 provide a powerful new light source for LIDAR systems. Since the invention of the laser, development in the laser technology has lot of improvements. The first use of laser in the LIDAR system was reported in 1962 as within two years laser was used for the atmospheric measurements by Smuffins and Fiapo who detected laser light scattered and scattered from the lunar surface using a ruby laser at 0.5 joule of pulse power and the wavelength of 694 nanometers. So ruby laser, ruby laser was the use for the getting the scattered light from the moon. Piago very next here report the detection of atmospheric lidar system. So these are the basics of the laser, laser lidar system. So you have a laser, then you have a beam expander, and then you have sent this in the atmosphere. So to make a collimated beam, you make the beam expander and to cover more area. Then you have a weak telescope, and then you have optical filtering and then polarization and all detector system and then electronics to record the system. So the basic thing is transmitter, receiver and electronics. Then we are worried about the backscatter light from the say direct sunlight or starlight or moonlight or ergo or scatter light from the anthropogenic origin. So to if you have a large field of view of the LIDAR system, then these will be problems of the background noise. So that, that's why this is a constraint, a constraint, especially true for LIDAR operations to operate them in daytime. So most of the LIDAR systems are operated during night time. So different type of lasers, LIDARs we already discussed, maybe Raman LIDAR, uh, resonance lidar, Florence lidar system, relay, and I have given the introduction how they behave. Laser heterodyne system, differential absorption, laser heterodyne system, I will discuss in detail. Differential absorption lidar, also I saw some result of NPL and Doppler lidar for measuring the wind at SRA. Lidars in India are a large number of institutions, of course, in the, uh, seeing the size of the country, it's not much, but still uh, there are almost seven, eight, ten laboratories which have the LIDAR system. So NPL is one of them, Vikram Space, uh, uh, Saravai Space Center has a, in Trivandrum another one, Indian Institute of Petro, Tropical Metrology, Pune has another one, Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad. So, Rashtra University, National MST Radar Facility in Garanki, Gohati University also has a micropulse radar, LESTEC in Delhi, and they of course use for the defense purpose, Allahabad University, at also at ESRA, at ESRA. So, maybe few laboratories has already radar system in India. NPL has, of course, the laser heterodyne system, inversion technique, differential absorption radar, radar, etc. Then, uh, to see the sensitivity of these uh, differences, uh, you have to see the cross section uh, per centimeter square or per stadium. So, the Rayleigh scattering has 10 to the minus 25 to 24, and it's used for density of the air molecules and temperatures. Me scattering is 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 5. That is for clouds, smoke, smoke, dust, aerosols. Remote, uh, remote resonance scattering that is for, uh, for trace species 10 to the minus 8 to the minus 6. Florence, uh, this in this way, the, the differential absorption 10 to the minus 15 to the minus 14. Raman scattering 10 to the minus 25 to 10 to the minus 4. So, 
this one and these are more sensitive and the uh, this one is this one see this one is the list so these are the used for different uh, the uh, these processes are used for different type of uh, applications for the atmospheric monitoring and here i am giving this uh, backscatter cross section uh, uh, in uh, centimeter square per stadium and here the tudium uh, maybe 1000 uh, maybe th uh, say 300 400 you divide by the cross section uh, in centimeter square you get these parameters so this is almost uh, 2 to 3 uh, powers uh, less so they are so mean scale 10 to the minus 8 to minus 10 atomic absorption 10 to the minus 13 molecular absorption minus 19 florence minus 10 to the minus 19 Rayleigh scattering minus 27 and drama scattering minus 10 to the minus 13 so these are the parameters and these are the various lasers available in the market and uh, commercially you can get these lasers and the wavelengths are measured so it has a ruby laser as 0.694 micrometer and the uh, 1.06 micrometer and most of the time you will see See that NDEAG laser we use is 532 or uh, three, 300 something and which is the harmonic of this laser second harmonic or third harmonic so they use the harmonics for atmosphere probing uh, then CO2 is 9 to 11 micrometer uh, it can be in tune in range at 9 to 11 micrometer range then uh, so it is a tunable one and CO is from 5, 5 to 6.5 micrometer and then you have a large number of dye lasers from 0.35 to 0.10 and this is a, another long list for various available lasers in the atmosphere uh, sorry in the market and you can use they are used for various different purposes so we have already discussed there are different uh, types of radar systems in that uh, available and uh, you principle of radar we already already discussed so you have a laser you have atmosphere scattering and then you have a telescope and the data acquisition system then configuration of lidar is make you can say three types one is a uh, say monostable uh, but bi axial means if they are transmitter and uh, transmitter and receiver are located at the same place but they are not coaxial they are they have different but there is a overlapping area here so from the spec scattering from this overlapping area you will be detected detector and uh, go to this uh, your acquisition system then you have monostatic means again sitting at the same place but having the co coaxial it was biaxial it is coaxial so you have the same axis for the transmitter and receiver so you have more overlapping area and these are most of the time you use this type of system then this is the bi-static bi system so they are separate transmitter and receiver are separated by a large distance and then where they were say in this area where overlapping is there then you get this say your transmitter here and so backscattering radiations will be going this direction and received by the receiver system so these are the three types of the configurations one can use and these are two major type of the telescope used are either newton one where you have the uh, receiving uh, radiations are coming here and reflected from bottom and there is a mirror which reflect it and uh, then you have a detective system here or you have a cassegrain system which is a small and compact one and here you have this uh, uh, coming signal here and it's reflected back here and put the system uh, detecting system here to detect the and analyze the data then different type of detector used are the photomultiplier tube silicon tube silicon avalanche germanium or mercury cadmium detector so depending on the, your requirement of activity and uh, gain at SRA, you can decide which type of detector you have to use 
and the, this is the equation for getting the temperature by using the lidar system so you can get your vertical profile by measuring various uh, parameters in the atmosphere you will the information of that then resonance uh, scatter lidar you tune the laser to a particular specific line where the, it is absorbed by a uh, uh, some specific uh, specific uh, specific uh, molecule in the atmosphere and that will be back scattered by that and you can measure the parameter depending on your environment so that is a specific correct uh, defined by the uh, molecule which type of uh, wavelength you are using raman lidar is again a uh, special type of uh, technique where uh, the wavelength you send is shifted by the back scale radiation. The wavelength is shifted, uh, maybe it's uh, anti stock or stock, and uh, that will be again a uh, characteristic of the molecule which is back scattering and uh, it will uh, shift according to the specific characteristic of the molecule. So you can identify which molecule are, uh, you are measuring and you will give the information of that. Differential absorption lidar is used to measure chemical concentrations such as ozone, water vapor and other pollutants in the atmosphere. In this system, two different wavelengths, two different lengths are taken. One wavelength is such that is absorbed by that constituent which you want to measure, say water vapor. So it should be a absorption line near the absorption line of the uh, water vapor and other lines should be such that it doesn't absorb the water vapor uh, is not absorbed by the water vapor so the difference in the you measure the difference between the absorption at the off level the absorption line and on the absorption line and that will give you the information of the concentration of the uh, uh, say water vapor or ozone or the constituent so, so some result I will show later on Doppler radar is used to measure the velocity of the target important Parameter and the light or target is coming uh, towards you. So, uh, if the target is moving forward or away from you, then the shift will be on the wavelength will be higher higher side. The shifted wavelength will be at higher side. That will be say you can say red shift. And if the moving uh, moving target is towards the leader, the return light will be having a shorter wavelength or that is known as a blue shift. So the target can be either a hard target or an atmospheric target. The atmospheric uh, atmosphere contains many microscopic, microscopic dust particles or aerosols in the atmosphere or which can carried by the wind. And these are the targets of interest to us as they are small and light enough to move at the speed of the uh, speed or velocity of the wind. So, if you can uh, measure this, uh, say red shift or um, blue shift, uh, red shift or blue shift, then you can find out what is the velocity of that uh, target, and that will be corresponding to the velocity of the air in the velocity of the wind in the atmosphere. So, that is the Doppler lidar is used for. Then nowadays. You can say that is a end of the Cold War has reduced the international tension the superpowers however in regional instability due to resurgence of nationalist religious ethnic strife which presents a real threat to peace in the all regions of the globe. So this is a real threat by the
these things. Hold the, all the group it, there you don't know any time. So additionally, there has been a remarkable surgical agent or they are considered to be the physiologically the more threatening of the two and therefore provide more appeal to the terrorist to use them. So they, the next slide, how effective they are. So say if you have the chemical weapons, this much grams to have your target, say maybe thousand people or like that. Um, and, but the same target you can have here, say you are using 10, uh, uh, and here you 10 grams say here the if you are biological weapon you can use only 0 0.001 means uh, 10,000 times less and uh, still you can uh, have your target uh, whatever you want so that is the so figure shows the approximate mass mill in milligrams of an agent needed to achieve the desired result in comparison to toxic and chemical weapons. So if you have the chemical weapons, you need this much uh, milligrams and while it, you need biological uh, weapons, you need this much only so many, many times. So what's difference in different effectiveness between the biological agents uh, and chemical agents is seen at at the extreme, some biological agents are as much as 14 billion times more effective than the chemical agents, making it easy to see why biological agents are often described in the poor man's atomic bomb. So that's why nowadays efforts are being made to use a, to uh, have a LIDAR system using the, to detect the biological uh, as agents in that must be and to give the warning to the people before it. I already talked about this that what are the activities in different laboratories in the India and what type of leaders they have. Uh, so they are different laboratories in India having different type of leaders and their activities here. Then uh, chronicle account of the space based lidar systems around the globe is uh, here the lidar the in the there was a lidar in the space technology experiment that is light lit which is the first earth orbiting atmospheric lidar launched in september 9 1994 for the uh, from the uh, Capes, uh, sorry kennedy space uh, Flight Center, Florida. Then there was a subtle uh, laser altimeter that was launched, uh, that is SLA01 in January 11, 1996, and SLA02 in August 7 to 19, 1997. Mars or orbital laser, alt, uh, laser altimeter, that is MOLA, was launched in September 1997 to June Geo science laser altimeter system that is glass GLS for aerosol and cloud um, was ICES was launched in January 12, 2003 from Wonderbag Air Force Base in California and Mercury laser altimeter MLA was launched in 2004 and so cloud and aerosol lidar and infrared path pathfinder satellite observations calypso lidar missions was early in 2000 from the air force uh, base in uh, Bundaberg and Cal calypso will fly in the formation with the uh, aqua um, era cloud set and parcel of uh, combining data from the these from these instruments on these spacecrafts will allow a uh, myriad of the important characterization of the aerosols and clouds and their effects on the radiation um, buzzard 
uh, maybe made uh, the picture i will show that how the uh, these satellites are um, arranged in a systematic way in a, uh, they say a train like so they go one after the another so give different get different parameters and the analysis give you the lot of information of that and these are the different uh, space uh, based uh, uh, systems uh, which flown and used has been used for the uh, has been used for uh, the parameter systems this is uh, some of the say space shuttle uh, in which the lit uh, was uh, sent and uh, I would just want to, for curiosity, I want to tell that the first space shuttle, space shuttle when was launched, I was at the laboratory. So I witnessed the first space shuttle launching and then the last space shuttle launching was, last travel of the space shuttle was, again I witnessed in when I was in California from the Marshall Space Flight Center. So I witnessed the first and last one. So these are the characteristics of the LIDARs uh, uh, used in the, uh, say laser systems used in the uh, satellite LIDARs. So wavelengths were used 64 or it's harmonic 532 or third harmonic 356 or pulse energy was around the 445 to 357 and see these are the four different um, uh, say projects LIT, GLASS, Calyp Calypso, MOLA, SLA and MLA. So different uh, systems, uh, different leaders so, uh, has different characteristics and uh, uh, so this is just to give information that uh, what type of data they have been used in different systems. So this uh, most of them uh, 1064 have used all of them and uh, second harmonic was used only light, glass and calypso and uh, um, this also uh, third harmonic by the light and uh, calypso and pulse energy much here. So I will not go in detail about that. So this is the how the Calypso and the uh, all satellites go in a line in a train. They say it's a, like an A train. Uh, say this is Aura, this is the other one, this is Calypso and this is Cloudset and this is Aqua. So this uh, all one, two, three, four, five goes in a sequence uh, one after another and they say uh, that the satellite that fly in formation during the Calypso mission uh, is shown here. This, uh, this grouping is known as the US Aqua class classification or A train. The A train name comes from the old Jazz's Jazz tune. And this is from a uh, tune, it was taken A train. Uh, take the A train. That was the name of the tune and uh, composed by the Billy Stray Horn and made popular by the Duke Ellington. It is, band, it is the afternoon uh, constellation and has aqua in the lead with the aura in the rear. So aura is the last and aqua is the uh, front and uh, cuts, this is a courtesy from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And the, from this you can see how much detailed information or cloud you get with time and so with the, the passes and very different layers of clouds can be detected from this. So a lot of information has been obtained by the satellite based LIDAR systems. Then I come to the laser heterogeneous system design and development at, at National Physical Laboratory in New Delhi and we will spend some time on that. As you know, a large number of minor constituents in the atmosphere 
has their characteristic absorption lines overlapping with a large number of lasers in the atmosphere. Say these gases, most of them has the absorption coefficient in the 9 to 11 micrometer region where the CO2 laser is available. And these gases has a very tunable uh, semiconductor diode laser uh, has a very capability of um, they have to use different crystal but it has a capability to go from more, 1 micron to up to 30 micrometer range. So they have so you have large number of lasers available who has the overlapping absorption lines uh, with that of the, the who has the emission lines with that of the absorption line of various constituents of the atmosphere. So that property can be exploited to get the information about the atmospheric various molecules in the atmospheric atmosphere. So this uh, we have used for our laser heterodyne system this property and uh, we have also uh, used this in the differential absorption leader. Okay. We have used nature for our experiment. We have exploited nature, exploited the nature to get the atmospheric parameter using the laser heterodyne system. How? You see, if you take any absorption line at a ground level, due to the very high pressure here, it is very largely broadened here. So say at ground a laser, a CO2 absorption line will be as half width as 3000 megahertz. But as you go up in the atmosphere, because pressure is less and less, so pressure broadening of the line will less and less and this property is being exploited by me to get the vertical profiles of the ozone or other parameters in the atmosphere. How we can do is that we take the observation at the line center, then we take the observation in the wings of the lines at different positions and that will give the information uh, about this. So we have a say source is sun, then we focus with a uh, lens here and uh, we take uh, use the heliostate to track the sun. So you get always uh, in a constant direction the beam because as the sun uh, rotates, uh, your sun position moves, your heliostate take care of that and that uh, radiation will be always available in a fixed direction. So then you focus it and take a uh, that you have a local oscillator here. So here local oscillator we use a CO2 laser and we mix this laser solar radiation with the CO2 laser with a very very uh, special type of detector that is mercury cadmium dioxide detector with a very high uh, bandwidth of the say 1000 megahertz and then the detected signal is divided into various channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or to say maybe 16 channels and each channel will give you the information about the vertical distribution of that uh, constituent which you are measuring. So this is the block diagram of the system, how it works. Then I will go in details about that. And then first let me say about the how we do this vertical profiling. So we developed the inversion technique. So this is a first theoretical work. Then we go to the experiment. The inversion technique has been developed based on inverse solution of radiative transfer equation. Uh, this has been published by me on uh, 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 Journal of Optics in 1999. In this analysis, Lorentz profile was used up to 25 kilo. Lorentz profile means the line broadening due to the pressure pressure burning. So that is known as a line pro, pro, uh, pro Lorentz profile. 25 kilometers we take into account only the pressure burning, but above. Uh, 25 kilometers you have to use a Doppler broadening means uh, uh, you have to take into account lower end pressure burning as well as the Doppler broadening uh, due to the because their um, collisions are very slow and the, the, the molecular uh, movement very fast so you have to take into account uh, this so 
and that combination of the Lorentz and Doppler is known as a Voigt profile. Because in the about 25 kilometer Doppler proning is more dominant and below that is uh, Lorentz profile is uh, Lorentz broadening is uh, more prominent. So you have to take into account uh, only Lorentz below this and above this you have to take Lorentz plus Voigt, the, this uh, Doppler that is Voigt profile. For competition of the pair line parameters such as line half width, line strength, etc. For a strong ozone absorption line, we took this is an our experimental line 1053.96 micrometer band, micrometer uh, centimeter inverse, uh, so that will be near about 10, 10 micron region. In all, we had chosen 16 channels, one at the line center and 15 in the wings of the line, and what to resolve the line and hence to get a proper height resolution of, of, of the or say 1 to 3 kilometers. So you took uh, say observation at line center and in the wing of the line it separated by say 30 megahertz, 60 megahertz, 90 megahertz and something like that. So you have uh, now, uh, you have to choose uh, some specific uh, uh, weighting function and all this you have to calculate and to get the 1 to 3 kilometer height resolution. And the inverted profiles compares well with the model profiles. So I will tell you how this has happened. So this is this slide shows the calculation of the absorption coefficient and the line broadening. So this line shows the absorption coefficient due to the Lorentz broadening, and this one says due to the uh, say uh, void profile means here we are taking into account the uh, Lorentz as well as the Doppler broadening. So this is absorption to the void profile. Then half width you can say here it is like this and as you go up in the atmosphere it is very high here uh, around 3 mega 3000 megahertz and as you go up in the uh, atmosphere above up to this height is only with Lorentz broadening and above this so Doppler broadening lab behaves like this almost constant. So you have to take into account this. So if you take this and this into account about 25 kilometer it will behave this. So using these things we use the absorption coefficient and the half width at different altitudes and then so weighting function obtained is like this. So line center you have uh, profile like this and in the wing of the lines you have the weighting functions like this, 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 this and then the, if you take the observation depending on that and you can calculate your measurements you will get the vertical profile of the atmosphere. So we did a calculation first, say we assume this is the original profile, model profile, the straight line, continuous line. Then we assume that okay, vertical profile should be, gas profile should be like this, the, uh, the uh, ozone varying constantly throughout the atmosphere, no change. Then we compute the absorption coefficient taking into account of the different channels and compare with this till we get the difference between the two almost same from this as well as this. And finally after say uh, 20 iterations uh, we get the retrieved profile like this with the zeros here. And you can see these all zeros are very, very well near the very little difference between the original profile and dot. Then whether this profile inversion technique is good enough and depending on the in initial gas profile or not. So we took another gas profile like this. Okay and again we calculated the same way the absorption coefficient and you with the retrieved profile was like this cross here, 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 here. So you can see that the uh, it is the retrieved profile is not depending on the gas profile whether it's uh, uh, for this one or this one. So this technique then we finally use for our uh, measurements, real measurements. 
and these are the various equations used for the calculating various parameters in the work for different lines in the atmosphere. So now then the laser heterodyne uh, system which we developed has the following uh, specifications. Laser used was CO2 which was tunable and wavelength varies from 9 to 11 micrometer and has a near about 60 emission lines. So you can tune any line uh, in this uh, depending on your requirement. And power is 2 to 3 watts uh, and you can refill the laser as and when your power goes down. And detector is liquid nitrogen cooled uh, mercury cadmium telluride detector of very high speed is of the order say 1200 megawatt bandwidth. Spectral resolution is of the order say 0.0016 centimeters is 5 megahertz and high signal to ratio 40 dB and quantum efficiency is around 70 percent and profiles obtained was of on N2, H2 or NH3 and first of this type of experiment with 1 gigahertz across to optic spectrometer as a back end uh, was uh, is, uh, developed at NPL. Mm, maybe global scale you can see 1 gigahertz was the first time with the collaboration of the Indo-French observatory in France. These are the lines which we used. So this is a block diagram of the system and these are the profiles which we got from the our system. And uh, then uh, say earlier system we were using these filters one by one. Okay. So tuning the uh, one field go one channel tuning the one then go to next one third one fourth one fifth one is was 16 channel so it was taking to get one profile one hour so we uh, developed a system in the collaboration with the french observatory astronomical observatory in france a, a cost to optic spectrometer where what we do is the, the signal coming from the uh, detector is fed to a acosto optic um, say this uh, transducer here and here these different frequencies are diffracted at different angles and that here we have a chain of uh, all channels and that will and then we have a data aggregate system so every uh, channel will give you information within few uh, microseconds so you get a pro and then you have your inversion technique to get your vertical so this is the system uh, the photograph over antarctica where i developed the system the first it was installed at npl and then it was taken to antarctica uh, so this was the uh, my photograph here and this was the my own hut which we built ourselves and uh, you install our instrument all inside a helio state is here to track the sun and there is a window where the sunlight goes inside from here and it take all the day so you get the sunlight on the day till the in the summer time winter there is no possibility of take observations because there is no sun so this is the system at npl and then we uh, installed a liquid nitrogen plant also or antarctica for because to cool our detector you need the liquid nitrogen so we have installed liquid nitrogen plant also This is the system in Antarctica. This is the view of the our metri station. This is the main metri, metri station here. These are workshop or Tesla and our herds are here. We summer people we have herds here. So most of the people, summer people stay here. Then this lake is known as Indra Gandhi Predarshini Lake in name of the first of the former Prime Minister of Indra Gandhi and this broad photograph of the main station this one. So this was the first profile which I got in 1994 and this profile was used to get this pro vertical profile of ozone. So these are the various results and uh, then differential absorption lidar which we developed at NPL is used again uh, using a CO2 laser. We send the laser beam in a horizontal path and we use a retro reflector there so the laser beam comes back in that uh, and we collect it and then we have a chopper here to uh, for the reference to the locking amplifier 
and then we have detector system again mercury catmon detector and the lock and flare signal goes to uh, our computer and um, charter to get analyzed data and you can calculate the concentration of constituents by using this formula so you have to say how much power you have transmitted uh, on the absorption line and how much power you received off the absorption line and then how much power you have the uh, received uh, transmitted on the off the absorption line and how much power you received on the uh, on the absorption line means where there is no absorption or where is the absorption and then these are the uh, absorption coefficient at the uh, absorption uh, where there is no absorption and the absorption where the there is option uh, absorption of the absorption line so this information will give you the information of the concentration so this is the uh, dial system again at npl and most of the and these are the different lines which you can use for the ozone ammonia water vapor and ethylene this is the say uh, profile of the ozone analyzer and uh, compared with the dial system so these are the values of the dial system and this is so you can see the values on the same day almost compared well uh, one particular the also the water vapor was very very high maybe due to the lot of moisture in the atmosphere these are different parameters uh, say uh, ethylene water vapor and uh, on different days so this catered profile of that this again water vapor on different days so in conclusion i can say that uh, we uh, have very good uh, information we have a good chain of uh, experimental lidar stems around uh, all over the globe and they are doing very good job for measuring various parameters in the atmosphere it's a very good technique and india is also making a good progress in this direction and uh, the material for this presentation was taken from various sources and i sincerely acknowledge the same and express my sincere thanks to all and also i thank you all of you for having a very nice uh, patient sharing and maybe it is uh, useful and if time permits i will show some more uh, photographs of various instruments uh, uh, used by various uh, institutions or available lidar systems so if our time permits okay so let us go if we have some questions there and uh, then uh, if time permits then we will go to the slides which are there in the presentation Sir, can we use a Mr. Akash Solanki is asking. Uh, sir, can we use lidar in water quality monitoring? Uh, yes, definitely, because uh, you take a pure water and uh, calculate the absorption, and uh, then uh, take the uh, impure water and uh, pass the laser beam again and see the. Uh, again the um, how much signal you get so the pure water and the difference in the impure water will give you the uh, how well, uh, good uh, how uh, say pure is water system so you can do try that yes how do 3d double uh, building models from lidar data uh, 3d building means with uh, say you have a vertical profile and you are scanning the uh, uh, through the um, uh, lidar system uh, with a scanner so you can get the 30 3d shape uh, or you can scan like this and so you get a 3d model for that who has lidar data so you can get from nasa or you can get from nova and uh, in india you can contact the various principal investigators uh, if they can or you can have a collaboration program with if you want to have a, some and uh, want to do some analysis with the data uh, 
I have applied for MS in Atmospheric Science in Colorado State University, USA. I was not sure which research would be best for me, but now I am able to get idea that there is uh, that today topic is the most important one. So I give you con uh, congratulation you in advance, and uh, I think you will have a wonderful work over there in the Colorado State University, and. Uh, um, they have a nearby um, this NOVA center and you can collaborate with them and there are many LIDAR systems there and uh, NOVA so you can have a visit with them I have visited them and I gave uh, say two three talks there a few years ago I am happy to do the research there if my application uh, I um, wish you all the best for the success of your application Uh, how to distinguish uh, Mr. Amrishu Vajpayee asks, how to distinguish building from a vegetation in LIDAR data? Because building will give a very strong strong uh, signal to because the backscattered radiation will be very strong and vegetation will not give that much strong and similarly if vegetation is there and aerosols are there so aerosol will, will give very very little uh, backscattered uh, signal while the vegetation will go and building will give still more signal so you can easily identify the building and the vegetation or aerosols can we, uh, Mr. Akash Solangan asked, can we use the uh, LIDAR for soil quality monitoring? Uh, I have not uh, seen this type of work, sorry. Uh, thank you so much then. What are the major uses of LIDAR? Uh, please again. So, major uses of the LIDAR is to um, measure, the, uh, measure the vertical aerosol particles in the atmosphere, uh, minor constant in the atmosphere such as water vapor, ozone, ammonia, etc. And uh, even the biological um, agents you can uh, see with the LIDAR system. So, there are many applications uh, to get the uh, atmosphere parameter using the radar system and also they are used for the defense purpose also because uh, if you have a radar system and some enemy is coming for distance and uh, suddenly you have a um, strong signal you can identify it. yes there is there is something there who is moving and uh, maybe dogs uh, radar will be Again, it will give you a lot of information whether it's it coming towards you or going away from you. Yes, you can write definitely for LIDAR data to person concerned. Then uh, Reddy Sony ask Reddy Sony ask that lidar be used for the bath bathymetry. I don't know. Abhinav Patak ask is lidar used in determining locations? Yes, definitely. What is the penetration depth of the lidar in water? Very little, no. because the water. Uh, this uh, is water is a very good absorber of the radar region, but you use a such a wavelength where there is a, no absorption of water in that. Uh, so then you can go more and more depth, but uh, um, there is definitely a case of strong absorption. You can write to me by at my email that is sohan46 at uh, gmail.com. I already received your mail, but uh, 
you asked me something uh, uh, that you needed a ppt of my lecture but it's uh, too long to send by the uh, email but uh, as dr was said that it will be available on the website so you can download from there is there any more questions if not more question i will take one or two minutes to show you some more pictures of various type of lidar system so okay i will go back to presentation site so we had a very nice discussion about the and you have very good questions and answer and maybe it will be useful for your future careers and all these things so this is a very good uh, saying the best day in antarctica is the day you arrive and next best day is the day you leave it and these are the local populations there so they are the citizens of the antarctica uh, this is a micropulse lidar uh, commercially available and this is another micropulse lidar which is again a uh, ozone profiler of course and is it uh, commercially available and this is another system uh, at some observatory which uh, are sending laser beam during night and you can see very nice beam going up in the atmosphere and big scale radiations are observed here this is a um, vehicle based uh, system where they they mount the whole system in the side the system and then they have a telescope here and uh, they send the beam in the atmosphere and receive the signal here and all electronics and everything is inside so that's a very good thing prl has one um, and uh, they can take at different places and uh, take measurements uh, depending on their requirement at npl i also order for a vehicle but uh, it took maybe three four years to get the vehicle and maybe till today they have not got the vehicle may stuck somewhere in accounts somebody asked to how to get the 3d picture of the of using the laser so you have a lidar here and you uh, have a scanner system so you get the profile like this so 3d profile you can get easily using this type of scanning system these are the um, uh, systems used in the uh, space uh, flights these are different st uh, systems uh, made by different uh, organizations this is another very big uh, lidar system uh, having the relay me and drummer lidar system all three um, are there this is again a um, relay uh, me and drummer lidar system this is another view of that same thing and this is the actual transmission another uh, photograph of the relay and me and uh, rama lidar system then this is a sigma company which make the micropulse lidar these are the some photographs of clouds obtained by, obtained from the space this is aurora uh, obtained from the MPL net means micropulse uh, lidar net is there so there are located many places in the around the globe um, and so if somebody is interested uh, they can contact a person in uh, nasa and uh, they can have a micropulse lidar in india also and join the network from them and uh, these are the various stations uh, where they install the micropulse lidars these are another various systems this is another one so here i then uh, conclude and uh, say again thank you to every one of you who participated and maybe sometime future we will again interact and uh, again i thank uh, the organi organizers uh, for providing me the opportunity to interact with you people and uh, uh, share my ideas about the atmosphere probing 
uh, using various techniques and uh, so let us uh, thank you every one of you and uh, let's finish the talk today thank you